Uh, welcome to the talk, and uh, thanks for coming into the session. Uh, okay. So today we are going to see how we can build DSLs using Groovy. And uh, before that, uh, we would go over a brief introduction, what DSLs are, and see some of the existing APIs or examples of DSL where it is using. It is being used, and uh, then we'll start writing our DSL. Okay. So, w what is a DSL? Uh, it is a computer language which is specialized to solve a specific problem. So, this is in contrast to the general purpose language, so which which is actually like Groovy, which is actually used to solve multiple problems. So, but DSL is not a general purpose language. It it has some, you know, uh, it should be concise, simple, and uh, it should be focused on that specific domain where, where all the methods and uh, properties are understandable by human, uh, not the programmers. So by human, I mean the programmer are humans. <laughs> all right. So, and syntax is focused on intended domain. And the last point is very important. It should be small and simple. So who am I? So my name is Puneet Behel, and I work for a company in India, To The New. And I'm an associate tech lead, following my Twitter, email, and GitHub address. So let's see some of the characteristics of DSL. It is highly context sensitive, which means the it depends on the context. So DSL mostly DSL works in Groovy. It work with closures. So and uh, the behavior of con closures is it they depends on the context where they are, they are being called or used. So in an analogy, let's see. It's it's a da Danish word, uh, though we all know what does it mean in English. But in Danish, it means speed, right? So yeah, so it's kind of a similar. The things means different in different contexts. So let's see some of the example. So so this is this is an example where we have a list of employees with the string names as strings. Okay, and when I say employees start with, and uh, where does this add method come from? This add come from. This is actually a method on list you can call, and the implementation or behavior of and will add will vary if the list, if, for example, if this is a comma separated list of employees, it it will have different. And let's say if it is a list of integer, then it will have a different behavior. So that's what I mean by context. So another important characteristic of DSL is fluency. It should be, this is a computer program, as you might have already seen in other talk of Groovy DSL. So which says take two pill of chloroquine after six hours. So yes, so this is what we mean by DSL, that it should be close to English rather than the programming language. We'll see how we can make this kind of code. Similarly, uh, Groovy by default provides some utilities like times up to each, so which makes it more readable than Java. Some of the examples like Spock. So Spock is also also use DSL where you have a method name adder test, and in the given you explicitly say what given is doing. Given a adder class is created, I created an adder, and then I expect these two number should be equals to seven. So this is, you know, uh, if, if we extract what's inside this, it's, it will be more like it's close to English rather than programming language, and uh, it's very concise and easily understandable by human. Another is Gradle. So Gradle also used DSL. So yeah, the things to note is, as I'm saying again and again, compact code and closer to English. Another important uh, point is it should be specific to domain. 
the syntax is more should be more towards the domain, not you know a generic language. So let's start building a DSL. <laughs> so let's see uh, can we how we can make this program. We show the square root of 100. Okay. So if if we see uh, typing is optional and groovy, so it will be something similar to this. Show the square root of 100. Okay, so we'll make please action. So so we'll say simply what is the what is the action? Here we'll say of and but uh, we need a show method which will just show show closer sorry Just this guy. So this uh, this is simply a closure. Uh, how many of you know Groovy already? Cool. That's what I'm expecting. So yeah, as you already know, this is a closure, and we are passing a number to a closure. Uh, instead of it, it should be a number. And uh, for show, it's simply saying print the number. Okay. So what did say? Yeah. So let's see if this works. So we we have defined a closure which just print the number, another closure which just calculate the square root, and uh, in this please we are basically passing show which is a closure as in what needs to be done on done, and uh, what is the logic and on what, which what is the number? So we are saying, please, the the action is a closure which is called here, and which again take uh, take the number and print it. So this what is it in itself is some closure which is called with number, which is what is square root here. Okay. So let's see. Let me just simply say Yeah. So this is the output of this program. If we change the number to so yeah. So this is one way of writing uh, a DSL or chain chaining command chaining this is called but uh, another way you could just separate out this logic into a class call, called dsl which will will say that our instruction 
dot dsl and we'll say please show the square root of 100 here and from the script you could simply uh, call execute and in the execute you could have uh, your DSL which is new file instruction dot DSL if you want to move this logic out in a diff different class you could also do that uh, say process dot groovy But in that case, you need to add this class over here. File process dot groovy dot text dot text. Let's see if this works. Uh, no solution with the official execute is a big argument I'm string values. Just give me a second here. <coughs> Set off this problem a little bit. Construction. I hope there is no typo in here. So now you write your instructions in this space. Uh, you could say, again, you could say, please show the square root of 9999. Okay, sorry. And then you can just execute your program. It will tell you the output of that as well. So the best time to ask question is when you have it. So if you have any questions, so feel free to stop me and ask it. So, yeah. So we saw this command chaining. So though this is one way of doing it, there are more ways. Or so this is a little dirty where we are co combining multiple files. But we'll see in the later slides how we can do it in a better way. So here is another example. Uh, you can use closures and delegates uh, to cre to create a DSL. So in this in this example what I'm doing I'm creating a CFP which is call for paper so what is the title uh, it, it clearly it, it is more readable which is hey the title of my talk is building DSL using groovy the description is blah 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 it's not blah 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 <laughs> so uh, level is intermediate owner is session owner is Puneet Bhal and duration 50 minutes so how does this work behind the scenes so let's Create another example. Sorry, my bad. Okay. Example two. I'll close. Copy this guy here. Script dot groovy. So instead of instruction, okay. I'll create a DSL here. Instruction dot DSL. Okay, and uh, let me copy the input from some other example I have. So, so th there is little difference between this example and the previous one. Uh, we are adding some imports over here, and. Uh, Process.groovy is where we, our logic resides. So, just close this guy. So, for, for levels, we need an enum class, which we'll create here. Level.groovy. Simply 
is het in hem. Let's say we have two levels right now. We we have two or three, by the way. Three, okay. Beginner and advance. Um, I don't have that button. Okay. And there is another cl class which is called conference dot groovy. Class conference. So we have a method called CFP, which takes a closure. We will need we'll need another class called CFP, which will have these properties: string, title. What are the things in this example? Description. and level owner and duration okay so the way we can do it we will simply say cl dot delegate to class cfp and then you call this guy So let's see if this works. We have script here, right? Instructions strategies. So we need another method to display uh, the details of the talk. Create another method. Right. Display. So since let's create a variable here, static. Also, this method needs to be static. Right, cool. So, for displaying the CFPs, we are saying each print CF, CFP print ln dollar CFP. All right. Okay, let's see how it works. So let's just run this guy. So we, we see some errors. So what it is, it says process start groovy. Why do I need a process start groovy? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just directly running this uh, DSL right now from here. And it will fail Why? it says no signature of method script.title. So the important thing to note in this example is it is not a property uh, we are setting here. So this is a method called, we are saying, a title. So for in order to fix this, we need to add these methods inside the CFP class. We'll say void title is equal to title let me just copy it over to save time All right. So let's see. 
let's see if this works now. Cannot invoke method add on null object. Do save it. Go close. Well, I think I did. Here. What's the difference here? Ah, nice. Yeah, thanks. All right. <laughs> so you're not a programmer when things work for the first time. <laughs> so it says no method display. On, and the reason is I think I forgot to make this method static. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I would like to change this print ln to something more readable. All right. Cool. So if I, if I need to add another talk, I could just simply say this. Start display. And I'll comment out this guy for a while. Right. OK. So as you might have realized by now, writing DSL is, is not very difficult uh, once you know how to write it. But it really makes the life of you know, uh, people working with DSL very easy uh, because the only thing you need to do is you just need to define CFPs like this. And similarly, with our previous example, it's more like an English where you're saying, hey, please, and all your methods are you know, more like the English keywords or syntax. So do you see any problem so far in this example? So there is one problem I face when I'm working in IDE, whenever I'm using closure and delegates, that you know uh, the IDE does not know. Or if I add type check annotation, I think that will also don't know about it or compile static. So in order to fix that, Groovy added another support called add delegates to. could simply say the syntax is strategy. Uh, you could avoid strategy unless there is a change. And the other argument is the name of the class where you want to delegate. So this will help IDEs to know, give you auto -compl complete, and uh, you could also add type check annotations. So so simply just now, let's see if our program still works. Where? OK. OK, yeah, thanks. It's failing because I run the wrong file, so I need to run this guy. So going back to slides, we'll make some more enhancement in this example, but I'm moving away for now. So if you see this, we could also make this 50 dot minutes. Uh, you know, uh, instead of in string, we could also make this integer, and we could simply say uh, which, like this. So you could simply have 50 dot minutes. So th for this, uh, you could use uh, meta class, meta programming capabilities of Groovy, where you add a meta class, get minutes, and and you could have your logic here if you want to show in minutes or seconds or whatever value. So this will help you write 50 dot minutes or 50 dot seconds.
So dynamic method, there is another way you could have uh, meta program, uh, this write DSL. Uh, let's say I have a list of candidates uh, coming for an interview named John, Alex, and Hannah. And uh, they, they appear for some exam and following are their scores. And at last, I want to view the report. So if I, if I go through this DSL, it is more readable to me, which says that, hey, there are some candidates. These are their scores. And in the end, I want this report. Okay, so how do we do that? Let's see, using dynamic methods. Don't save. Example three. I'll copy this script dot groovy. This is same as before, it's just calling a file named candidates.dsl where I have my logic. Okay. Okay. I hope I have an S in this as well. Right. Cool. Thanks, Christian. Okay, so where is our DSL? This is our DSL. I need a file named process.groovy where I, I'll have my logic. So let's say I created a map, candidates and scores. And I have a method so let's see if I run this program now, what happens? So it'll complain for the uh, for the candidates method. So let's create a candidate method in this guy. D dates and. Score, I'm saying zero for now. So this should initialize our, and I'm commenting this guy for, so let's see if this works. That's strange. This should not be an issue, but let's see. Yeah, this should not be an issue, but I'm just changing it to save time. Expecting EUF, found character, so it's just the enter. So since we are doing a dirty way of merging two files, so it's because of the space. This is bad. Names right, we have DSL right. Yeah, I don't know what I changed. Last, but yeah. So this this works well. So we'll add some more things to our candidate. So let's say I'm adding score now. So this will actually call a method uh, in Groovy, which is 
which is in kind of an interceptor if a method is not found this method get calls which is method missing so if we simply override that method in dot groovy let's say method missing it takes an argument name and uh, arguments to the method all right so if we simply override this method uh, this will work so let's see how i'll say candidates and score and let's say I say name and this is score. args zero is where your score comes in. Okay. Yeah. So let's run this guy once again to see if everything is working fine. All right. It's just returning the last line, but our scores are being added. So I, now I need a you know, so let's add a method. So everything, so far everything is done, but let's just add this guy as well. Report winner. And in my candidate.dsl, I could simply say report winner. Winner is Alex with score eight, and let's see what values we entered. Okay, let's say I make John score seventeen. So I just want to show I have not hard coded this winner. <laughs> so let's see. Right, this is working. All right, so this is how you could do for dynamic methods, but let's see what other method ways you could do. There is another interesting thing. Of in Groovy, which is called categories, how you could use it. Uh, define the name of the class and you could just use, this is a time category, is an existing library class in Groovy, where you could say, let me run this example. Okay. Example four. Groovy import. Let me just see the package. Groovy dot time dot star. You say use time. Agree. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> okay. And let's see, we could say, let's have a date time here. And we could simply say, time is equal to one day dot ago. Two one days ago, or two days ago, let's say. All right. Print in time. So it's May 29th, right? Two days ago. And you could simply say, two minutes ago. So, so this is an existing library which you could use, uh, but you could also create your own class for this. So, so let's see this. Uh, I'm not writing this down. Let's see this demo. Let's say I have created this class string utils. Are you able to see the font now? Okay. So I have two methods named get cam camel case and uh, remove leading and trailing tokens from string, some encrypted string. Okay, so the first argument to this method is self, another argument to this guy is token, which I am use, using for decryption. The self is the string on which I'm calling this method. So, so in order to use this, how can I use it? I could simply say process dot, no oh shit. I could simply say script and uh, you could simply say use string utils and name, camel case name and uh, print an encrypted string and this will work. Everything else is same in this example. Uh, this is some hello time example which I just showed you. And you just need these two classes. 
So it converted John Doe to John Doe in camel case. And uh, this is my encrypted super secret string, which contains some characters before and after. And I'm room I have a logic to remove those. All right. So custom categories, expendo meta class, we already saw this. Uh, you could simply uh, use meta class in Groovy to add some behaviors on existing classes like string integers. And uh, yeah, let's see how we can integrate. So now let's take another example. Let's say I have a class robot.groovy. And I have a DSL instruction. Instructions.dsl. And here I want to say robot.move 100. Move left, OK? But right now, this is, let, let's just go a step back and write a little bit groovy version of this program. This is the end result we want to reach. We want to say that, hey, robot.move left, and it should do all the processing. So now step back and write a groovy version. So let's say I created a file name, instructions.groovy. So what I need to do, I need to create a robot class object. OK? which will define the direction. So I'm creating direction, creating enum direction, left, right. I'm adding two directions right now, OK? And let me just import the sky here. Direction left. Move and I'm sorry. okay. Where was it? Ah, did I add a method name move in robot? Nothing in robot, okay. But if move direction. And let me just add for simplicity. Robot is moving in this moving direction. Okay. All right. So let's run this instructions.groovy and see if this works. It's saying Robert is moving left. So now we have a few things extra here. So I really don't want to create object in my DSL file. So, so let's just remove this and see if this still works. No, obviously not. Yeah, obviously not because the object is missing. But there is another way you could add this object, which is through the binding class. So the way to do this is go back to this guy. Here. Create another class script dot groovy. And let me just do I have a sample script on? All right. Create a binding. So you can add the object over here. 
I'll pass this to class dot class loader slash as a second argument to this guy. Thanks. Okay. And what do I have in my instructions dot groovy? Okay, let's see. Findings. So let me just see the package of this class. Should be this. Ouch. Okay. So it's working now. So what else we can do in this instructions.groovy to make it more readable? We could remove the imports. So for removing the imports from here, uh, also you could, if you, since this braces are optional, you could remove them and run them again. All right. And let me just change it to see. So in order to add imports, so you can add customizers, you could have a configuration, compiler configuration in Groovy. So, which is, just guy, say define your configuration here. Let's see, def config is equal to new compiler configuration. Okay, config dot, so now we need to add imports to this configuration. I'll add ICZ, import custom new, import customizer, okay. CZ dot add, let me just add the syntax for this guy. Okay. Big dot add compilation customizers and simply pass this config here. Let's just remove these imports. Cool. So you can also make your DSL like this. So so let's just go over again what we did. Uh, we ha to give it some environment, some imports, we created some compiler configuration. And in the configuration, you define what imports you need in order to run this DSL. So the way to do it, you create an import customizer and add some static imports. You, ha you, you have a lot of methods over here. So instead of rather than static, you could add, add import. You could also add star imports as well. So there are other methods, and simply we just call this guy from here. All right. So there's another term, which is called base script class. So another thing we could do is uh, we could define, by default, the, for all the scripts, the base script class is script, and uh, you could also extend the, that class to add additional behavior. So, for example, the, these methods. So I'm saying robot.move. So I could create a robot base script class and I, I could have a move method inside it. Now, if I change my base script class from here, in here, if I say config.scriptbase class, is equal to Robert base script class, which will ex which should extend the script class and should be abstract, something like this. So you could create your your version of Robert base script class and uh, have some have a move method over here. So you now you don't need to call say Robert dot move. You could simply say move left, move right, as well. And Yeah, there's one more thing like AST customizer or secure customizers in Groovy. So 
So as I said initially, you should not make this gen generic language or use it for general purpose. So you might want to add some security in this as well. So where you could say, hey, you should not be able to define methods inside my DSL. You should not be able to call this method. So all these can be achieved by customizers. There, there is another customizer, secure customizer. You could use that and define your rules over there, whitelist or blacklist, those guys. I think that's pretty much it. Any questions? Right. So the, the file you're exposing to your uh, to anybody who is not a programmer or who is writing these instructions is instructions.dsl. So in that DSL, you yes, you're right. You, you could name it a groovy.groovy .groovy file and define methods. So that's where I said you could use more customizers, secure customizer, where you could say that these are white label. In fact, you could define remove these imports you should not be defined these able to define these imports in your instructions or groovy file all right thank you